And you have an interesting situation when you're using statistical methods because you, you, one of your maintained hypotheses is a stability of distribution. And for instance, when the Russians announced they were defaulting in the late 90s, all kinds of seemingly uncorrelated returns instantly became correlated, in part because emerging market funds that would lose in one place have to rebalance and sell or delever across the whole spectrum. One of the things I've learned is the point that you made about the stability of distributions. And I've always said there is no one distribution of risk. There is different distributions of risk at different points in time. You made a very interesting point about that the risk of GDP growth or oil prices or wars or whatever is just shifted. It's not generated. But at one level, the composition of these distributions becomes affected by the nature of financial structure. Oh, I so, couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more because essentially I look at risk and I've always looked at risk as two separate things. Exogenous, which is what Keynes would call uncertainty. I mean, there's a war, there's a, a shock in the a tsunami or a nuclear accident. The second one is endogenous risk, where the system itself generates its own risks. And so because we act in certain ways, and it goes to a very interesting issue about policymakers you alluded to earlier. About a year and a half ago, I went and saw a whole bunch of investors. And I remember one investor looking at me and says, so, so I've got to get inside the mind of these policymakers. I'm going, well, that's a pretty good first step that I would say. Well, the, the mind of Alan Greenspan, which was, try, he tried to be very transparent, which is, I'll underwrite your losses and it's, mitigate the downturns and the IMF will come to the rescue. And the whole regime of leverage was built on that confidence. You know, Alan Greenspan was always sort of chided for his sort of elliptical and very circular ways of speaking. And I said to somebody, I have actually no trouble understanding him. I don't know why everybody spends so much time poring over what he says, because you know what he does. You have a track record of what the man Starting does. Starting in 87. Exactly. And you sort of look at that and I say, it's actually a certainty, but it was also a fake certainty because that worked in a certain period of history. I and think at some level what's happened is that cumulative confidence built debt levels to a threshold where they can no longer manage the system. I think that's a good way to think about it because essentially having confidence has to be allied to ability and some reality, it has to be grounded. Mm -hmm. And I think we got carried away. This sounds like Hyman Minsky. There's endogenous instability because the guarantees are good until the system absorbs the guarantees and makes it risky again. I always joke that Minsky's, this was Minsky's crisis. He's having a very good crisis. <laughs> He's been reinvented. And to be honest, I'm not a pure Minskyite in that sense of the word, but I do understand the profound insights yeah, that, that he was provided. A vision statement. And what he got to, as you mentioned, Keynes' uncertainty or Frank Knight's yes. uncertainty as distinction from measurable risk like a deck of cards, is that when you, when you get to this place, you're out there and you don't know really what's coming. And almost all of your estimates of whether it's safe or not are truly subjective. Oh, I could, couldn't put it in any clearer way than to say this. The worst thing in my view about mathematical finance and quantitative finance was to reduce risk to a number because it avoided all thought going into what risk was. Because once we had that number, everybody just focused on the number. And as I kept saying to people, so much in the way of assumptions go into that number to make that number literally meaningless. And unexamined assumptions. Exactly. They're not consciously contemplated. And human beings are lazy, and I'm lazy, so I assume other human beings are lazy. So what happens is you go, oh, there's a number, and it just makes life comf comfortable for everybody.